Hello and welcome to First Issues, the, wait, he's still doing this WTF, didn't YouTube shut him down yet? Web series where I, the comic archivist, read the first issue of any given comic, usually new, and then talk about it over a static image. While listening to my ramblings, I suggest checking out the Westworld mobile game, which I'm currently totally addicted to. Today's issue is Catwoman number 1, written and drawn by Joel Jones with colors by Laura Allred. As the guy who made that super epic reader's history of Catwoman, which you should totally go and check out, I had to check this comic out. I was not a fan of the new 52 Catwoman, and yes, eventually the Final Thoughts video will be out where I lambast that. And with the air quote marriage of Catwoman and Batman as the major event that this actually spins off from, check the cover to validate that, I had mixed expectations for this. So let's see if this is a resurgence to the Catwoman that I know and fell in love with, or if it's just another stumble for this kitty. First, let's get with the plot. The basic plot for this issue is... Wait, spoiler warning for Batman number 50 incoming. Though the internet has been abuzz with it, and given Batman's history in relationships, you can probably guess it. Selina Kyle has run away instead of marrying Batman. Not surprising, but still. So she runs off hiding in gambling dens and living out of a storage locker, but the police try to arrest her for murder. Actually, two murders, and several other things. Interestingly, they do know that she's Catwoman, but after a chase, she gives them the slip. But everything has been building up for her, unable to sleep and just going through the motions that after she receives a package containing her Catwoman costume from Alfred Pennyworth, she breaks, needing to put it on and go out and get, and go and get some of that frustration out. Luckily, on this patrol, she runs afoul of the copycat Catwoman, who does get a lucky shot in and escapes. But during the chase, when she slams into a room, there's a dozen women dressed as Catwoman. Dun, dun, dun! First, I'd like to say what really pops in my mind with that ending is the classic Feline Fury storyline where Selina trains seven or so other women to be Catwoman to help her with her crimes. Yeah, it's a weird mental connection, but it was the first thing to come to mind. Actually, this entire thing really does feel almost like a retread of a lot of what I talked about in that Catwoman retrospective. Selina hitting the end of her rope, though in that instance she became more violent and back to her anti-villain roots, her not being able to stay tied down, which led to the fantastic ending of her 1990s series, and even when her copycat calls her old, it almost feels like a meta-commentary on how iconic Catwoman has been, even though she's being drawn in her 30s or 40s, she's still old hat. Oh, and another side note, the copycat Catwoman looks unmistakably like the Catwoman from the Batman Year One, with a darker complexion and nearly buzzed hair. So, Jones does fairly well on making a book that has classic Catwoman elements, without coming off as just a throwback series. It gives Selina a decent first issue away from any other title, and even a fairly emotional three-panel umph to the gut for those following Batman right now. The only negative on the writing that I could think of is that it does pretty much hop a couple weeks to a month after she left Gotham. That does work to distance the book from Batman and everything that comes with the fallout of issue 50. But it also means that when she does have her outburst halfway through this book, we've actually only had like eight pages with Selene in her new life, and half of that was a police chase mixed in with the villain of the story, at least I assume she's going to be the main villain, and it just loses some of that emotion that it really could have and it really builds on, or even a solid connection to where Selena is. It's not a bad thing, it just can easily be a misstep that will lose some people for a second issue. As for the art, I was trying to think of a diplomatic way of saying this, but I can't. I do not like this art at all. Or rather, it's much more busy than it really should be. And that can work sometimes, like mixing with the colors to make the lighting off the pleather costumes work really well to show off details, or at least hinted details and all that. But on the characters' faces, there's an overabundance of line work that just makes it unpleasant to look at. Even when it's a noseless woman who has no hair and everything like that, that I can kind of understand, but when it's a character like Selena who has this line work, it really does feel awkward. And the sad part is, is I'm usually all for the sketchy style with minimalistic colors like this, but it just comes off as unpleasant. So I guess before I burn too many bridges, I should get to the verdict. With the art not being aesthetically pleasing, at least to me, I know some people who really do like the art for this, and they can. But it's the writing that really makes me want to see how at least this first storyline ends, so my verdict is, read it, 
with an asterisk. Read it means that it is totally worth the read to either develop your own opinions on it or once you read it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. The asterisk here is that to get the emotional connection the book strives for in the first half, you may need to read the last few issues of Batman. That's not necessarily a bad thing, because I've been digging the hell out of the Bat books, but it can be a hindrance if you come into this blind reading. And that's really all I can say on this. If you agree with me that this is worth a read, or if you disagree and think this was a hairball from DC grooming itself too much, let me know in the comments below. While you're down there, let me know what you'd like to see for first issues or any of the other videos we have on this channel, like Comic Sins or Reader's History. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and please check out our Patreon. Even if that's not your bag, sharing and subscribing are always the best free ways to support this channel, especially since YouTube's YouTube. And as always, I'm the Comic Archivist, stay golden inklings.